quite pleased to see the fair amount of people in the room, uh, despite being an early start for us folks in the media space. Uh, on behalf of FIKI, uh, we are honored and privileged to welcome uh, Pooja Dr. Gyan Vatsal Swamiji. Uh, he doesn't need any introduction, but for those who are uninitiated, he is a life coach and eminent speaker. He has spoken uh, at various events across the world, uh, you know, on a wide spectrum of subjects uh, and uh, touched millions of lives. He's spoken in the US, Europe, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. He has been one of the most popular motivational speakers from BAPS, creating an everlasting positive impact in people's lives, transforming their intellectual quotient, emotional quotient, and spiritual quotient. He serves as an interpreter with earlier BAPS spiritual head, uh, His Holiness Pramukh Swami Maharaj, in many of his religious world tours. He has been instrumental in carrying out many youth development and social cultural projects of BAPS in Vadodara, Gujarat, India. I think uh, the topic today, obviously, is, which is where we are requesting Swami to speak on, is orienting the moral compass of the creator. I think as creators, uh, we all often have the dilemma that on one side, we want to produce wholesome content, something which we know is potentially good for audiences, but we are always plagued by this doubt, concern. Will this commercially be successful? Will this resonate with my audience? You know, uh, you know a lot of our content of late has, uh, is too graphic in nature, has probably not the best language. Uh, somewhere we feel that's become the norm. You know, that's what is needed to excite audiences, you know. Uh, I'm gonna request Swamiji to help us, you know, and potentially, you know, as creators, we, we always have this conflict of how do we orient our moral compass? So without any further delay, Swamiji, I would request you to take the stage, and thank you so much for doing this. Before we start, just one quick note. I'm sure you will have a lot of questions. My request is that please put them on a piece of paper. There's pen and paper on the table for each one of you. Put down your name. If you're from an organization, put down the name of the organization and your question in as brief a way as possible. Thank you so much. गुणातीतोक्षरं ब्रह्म भगवान पुरुषोत्तमः जनो जाननिदं सत्यं मुच्यते भवदना With prostrations at the divine feet of Bhagavan Swami Narayan, my Guru Hari, Parampuja Pramukh Swami Maharaj, and my Pragat Guru Hari, Parampuja Mahan Swami Maharaj, my heartiest namaskar and good morning to this very special session today in the morning of Fiki Frames, a three-day event. And on the special invitation of my dear friend Munjal, we are able to connect today. And the topic shared with me today is orienting the moral compass of a creator. I just want to start with a very simple question. How many of we want to or dream that every person upon this earth should be in a happy state of mind, in a happy state of a lifestyle? Just raise your hands, all of us, thank you. My second question, how many of we really believe from the bottom of our heart that man, if he chooses, he has the power to make himself happy and create happiness in his surrounding, if he chooses. How many of you say yes? Just raise your hands. All of us. Thank you. So basically, the ultimate motto of human life is to be happy and create happiness, isn't it? But the present state of affairs of the 21st century man these are the times of fancier houses, but broken homes. 
These are the times of double incomes, but more divorces. These are the times of high-rise buildings, but low-rise characters. These are the times of broader highways, but narrower viewpoints. These are the times where man has gone all the way to the moon and has come back, but he finds it difficult to cross the road and meet the new neighbor. These are the times of sometimes steep profits in businesses, but shallower relationships. In short, these are the times where we have much to show in the show window and much less in the stock room. Today we are talking and we'll be talking about that stock room. We have much to show in the show window, but much less in the stock room. In this present state of affairs of the 21st century man, when it is this, when it is this reality, you'd be surprised to know that there are more than 9,800 divorces every day upon this earth. Mankind needs something more of morals, something more of ethics, something more of disciplines and norms. You all would agree with me when I put forward a point that today we have better and best educational institutes all over the world than what we had for the previous generation. Yes or no? Today we have more academically qualified people upon this earth than what we had 25 years back. Yes or no? And still humanity is in danger. Danger of getting morally corrupt because crimes are increasing day by day. With the rise in academics and education, still crimes are increasing day by day. That means we are lacking somewhere. Otherwise, with the best of education, best of academics, best of institutes, and best of qualified people around us, still if crime is increasing day by day, see, we are talking of the end result. People today are less interested in the discussion of the process. People are straight away concerned with the end result. When crimes are increasing day by day, we need to introspect something. Am I right or wrong? Just my last statement. With after everything that we have today, that the previous generation did not perhaps, at least to this extent, when crimes of all types are increasing in the society, we need to introspect. And by that word we, I mean everybody, all fraternities, not just media and entertainment. I talk of business, I talk of even religious sex, I talk of businessmen, I talk of policies, I talk of bureaucracy, I talk of boards. By the word we, I mean everything. We need to introspect. See, we all want to leave behind a good world for our children. Yes or no? We all want to leave a better world behind for our children next generation. Yes or no? But at the same time, it is our responsibility to leave better children for the future world. It's our responsibility to leave better children for the future world. There comes orientation of our moral values. Because when after doing everything that we want to do, if crimes are increasing in the society, Everything needs a check, a recheck, and a double check. Am I right or wrong? When after doing everything that we want to do and doing everything that we are doing at the moment, if at the end crimes are increasing in the society, we all need introspection, a check, recheck, and a double check. Raise your hands if you say yes. There comes the orientation of the moral compass of the creators of all types. Media and entertainment, definitely, when I'm in the event today. But creators of policies, creators of viewerships. Everybody needs a recheck. You would be surprised to know that the annual defense expenditure of the world is more than $2,000 billion. Even in the year of Corona, in the year 2021, $2,000 billion of arms have been purchased. Why I'm putting this point? 
that there is no limit on the resources that we possess. God has put enough resources upon this earth. We as managers in between, we are not managing it well perhaps. Otherwise the resources are enough to make every person happy upon this earth. For example, California is dipping more than lakhs of tons of wheat into the Pacific every year. Lakhs of liters of milk go into the gutter every year in the European countries. So resource-wise, we are not lacking anything. I'm talking of material resources. I'm talking of existence resources. We have everything. But it is not being managed well. Farmers in California are paid by the government not to cultivate. Because if you cultivate and grow, we don't have the system to put everything in place. So again, people don't have the thought that if we have something excess, we can send it to poor African countries like Ethiopia or Sudan. We need to reorient our moral compass somewhere so that we can use the resources that we have to the optimum levels for the betterment of mankind. So my point number one was the present state of affairs of the 21st century man. We need reorientation of the moral compass. The second point is that we have enough resources. We need to reorient our moral compass so that we can make these resources reach to the needy, to the people. There also we need an orientation of the moral compass. More than 1,100 murders upon this earth every day. More than 1,900 suicides every day. Every 10 seconds, a child abuse is reported in the United States. 9,800 divorces every day upon this earth. Daily, 500 people are killed by non-military guns upon this earth. I'm talking of the non-military guns. Aren't these figures very disturbing? Yes or no? These figures are extremely disturbing. Are we all the intelligent people, experienced people, with a lot of know-how, are we bent upon making this earth a hell? Is a big question. So in this, my third point, which I put forward some statistics, we need to introspect into the moral compass that we have within ourselves. The moral compass in the activity that we do. The moral compass in things we give to the people, physically, mentally, and emotionally. We need to reorient ourselves because these are the statistics and it is increasing day by day. Somewhere we are lacking something. Somewhere we need to improve and that somewhere is morality, ethics, norms, disciplines and spirituality. Because we feel that we are human beings perhaps on a short spiritual journey at the, in the last 10 years of our life. It's not that we are actually spiritual beings on a very short human journey. We are here to make our world a better place that we found than we found. Am I right or wrong? Everybody of us would say yes when I ask you a very simple question. That our principal motto would be, before I leave this earth, I want to make that small little place where I was born or where I worked a bit better than how I found it. Yes or no? For that, after all the activity you do, whatever activity you do, Materialization is fine, we need it. Commercialization, commercialization is fine, we need it. But both should be aided well by moral principles, customs, tradition, legacy, social fabric, systems, purity, ethics, norms, disciplines. Only then we will sustain only then we'll be able to give something new to the next generation. It is the utmost need. In 1977, once there was a blackout, that's the electricity failure in New York, in Manhattan, for just for two hours. After two hours, 
I'm talking of upscale New York, I'm talking of Manhattan. All the showrooms were ransacked. Police cordoned off the area and found five, seven, ten pieces of home appliances packed neat and clean in everybody's house. People living in such a posh area, perhaps the most posh area of the world, Americans know it better. Manhattan in New York. And the police commissioner of New York put forward a statement that it was, an, it was a night of animals. If people living in such an area with this academic qualifications and this lifestyle and this way of thinking, what to think of other people? So we need morality. Otherwise, will not, we'll not live a good human life. See, man has learned to swim like a fish in water. He has learned to fly like a bird in, an, in air. But perhaps we find in this 21st century, after all this, that he has not learned to walk like a sane human being upon this earth. We have the best of refrigerators and the best of computers, but the worst of humans. We live in an age of guided missiles and misguided man. We need orientation of our moral compass to be a guided man. At present, it is the age of guided missiles and misguided man. We need guided man. And so this orientation, because this particular fraternity has a far outreach and far better power than the rest of the other fraternities in the society, to creep deeply into the hearts and minds of people and shape their thoughts and emotions. Am I right or wrong? This particular fraternity possesses that special provisions and power. <laughs> so orientation here yeah, for the moral compass is much needed. See, intelligence alone doesn't work. Today the mindset is intelligence and if I'm legally right, I can do anything. No. I would exemplify. It's a creation, it's an art, it's a creativity. But under the name of intelligence, art and creativity, you don't have the right, even if you're legally right. You don't have the right sometimes when it comes to moral boundaries, transcending ethical spaces encroached, sober behavioral patterns disturbed. You don't have the right to produce or put forward that creation. Intelligence has to be converted into knowledge first, that normally we do, but the third step remains to be done, and it is rarely done, that knowledge has to get transformed into wisdom. That wisdom is absolute morality. Intelligence creates anything. Knowledge has the power to put that creation into public, but only wisdom has the power, and we actually need it, that it can put a good moral wrapper outside it and a good moral material within it. So intelligence has to be transformed into knowledge and knowledge has to be transformed into wisdom. Very few people, very few activity actually reach the level of wisdom. To reach there, now I'm speaking a very difficult sentence, difficult for many to digest. To reach the levels of wisdom, we need to dematerialize, we need to decommercialize our activities. Now this is tough. It's like I fired on your chest. Because at the end of the day, every activity has to possess and it definitely has, at the peak of it, on the head of it, an absolute sense of professionalism, absolute sense of materialization, absolute sense of commercialization. The most urgent need for the 21st century man is to dematerialize and decommercialize. Everybody has to think on it. Otherwise, we are going to create disaster out of this. You know, coal, graphite, and diamond are real brothers and rather triplets. Coal, graphite, and diamond are real brothers, rather triplets. They are all made up of carbon atoms, deep into the earth by pressure and heat of millions of years. But the value of all three brothers are different. Though real brothers, triplets, born at the same place, a small piece of diamond can purchase truckloads of coal. Why the difference in the value of the two real brothers? It 
it is because of the design of the internal structure outer structure every all three of them are carbon atoms if this carbon atoms come comes together in a in a haphazard way it becomes coal the final product is coal if the same carbon atoms come together in a hexagonal structure we we studied the benzene ring in chemistry when we were in high schools if it comes together in a hexagonal structure it becomes graphite a bit more useful than coal we use it in pencils in other places if the same carbon atoms they come together in a tetrahedral structure the final outcome is diamond so all three real brothers triplets born in the same place but the value differs because of the design of the internal structure outer is the same so your intelligence and knowledge are same whether you possess or you hire intelligence and knowledge you possess or you may hire wisdom you have to possess you cannot hire that has to be created and that is the design of your internal structure iska vikas bahut kiya ab vikas yahan karna hai iska vikas bahut kiya ab yahan bhi vikas karna hai the heart has reasons of its own which the head can never understand that is morality the fine structuring the fine design of our inner self is morality as an i says and as i said in all the bodies in all the fraternities it is must it is absolutely must so now in clear words what is morality we are here to understand reorientation of our moral compass what is morality in simple words straightforward definition less 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 lesser and lesser on violence illicit sex drugs trafficking is morality less 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 and less on it is morality but this is 50% of the definition more more and more on goodness on selfless service on spirituality on help creating inspirations injecting the morals of success in the lives of people is morality again i repeat in one line less and less and less of violence from the creation stage to the viewership stage less and less and less on it on violence or illicit sex or drugs or trafficking whatever you say and more and more on goodness more and more on spirituality more and more on bettering people's lives more and more on bettering people's physical mental and emotional health is morality still we are not able to gauge the effect of violent scenes or violent uh, happenings on the screen on the mental and emotional health of a person days are not far off when there will be parameters to gauge it and when that day comes what every cigarette producer has to write on the packet cigarette smoking is injurious to health films will have to write violence viewing is hazardous to health likhna padega din bahut dur nahi hai zaruri hai वायलेंस व्यूइंग इज हजार टू हेल्थ जैसे स्मोकिंग इज स्मोकिंग मे बी हजार टू योर हेल्थ लिखता है ना पैकेट पे लिखते हैं उसी तरह लिखना पड़ेगा डेज आर नॉट फार ऑफ बिकॉज पैरामीटर्स विल बी डिजाइन एंड एक्चुअल रियालिटीज विल बी फाउंड वी आर फाइंडिंग मैनी इंसिडेंट बट मोर एंड मोर विल कम अप वेर वायलेंट सीन्स ऑन द स्क्रीन टू मच ऑफ वायलेंस टू मच ऑफ इलिसिट सेक्स टू मच ऑफ ड्रग्स टू मच ऑफ एडिक्शंस is going to affect people's mental and emotional health and this parameters will gauge it and finally they will be considered that this is the original epicenter 
to put this words on a cigarette packet it needed a collective consciousness to come up am i right or wrong a collective consciousness came up and the producers had to that is the manufacturers had to put that word on the cigarette packet collective consciousness regarding this has started rising in the society so this will have to be put we need this so basically when it comes to creation of anything some fundamental questions you have to ask yourself and that gives the platform from for a moral creation i come from the baps swaminarayan sanstha which is one of the largest organizations in the world we are among the top 10 ngos of the world with a permanent status in the united nations as an ngo we run more than 1300 hospitals hostels schools colleges community centers sanskar kendras mandirs and akshardham and we are about 1300 saints in the organization many of our saints have be have studied in schools like harvard stanford carnegie mellon and the like so we know what is management we know what is administration we know what is marketing or what is hr because we are directly involved in the administration and management of all our institutes so it's not just i, I just read a couple of articles and a couple of books and standing in front of you we have a huge production department our two saints his vimal yogi swami and his saral swami both are born american citizens and they take care of our production department everything that we create and put in the public they do it so we know what is this and we if we are constantly on the move in the society so we also know the end results of different types of creations so we need to orient our moral compass so that we leave a better earth for our future generation and better children for the future earth both everything doesn't need materialization everything doesn't need commercialization we are human beings it's not an animal world it's a human world do you agree with me or not and when i talked of our organization our guru hari pramukh swami maharaj who made this organization reach to this level single handedly he created 1300 institutions of social service at the rate of creating one every 15th day in his life his moral compass he lived his motto in the good of others lies our own in the progress of others rests our own so when you create a content as a creator this question you need to ask yourself is it going to spread goodness is it going to elevate humanity in the hearts and minds of people to some extent this questions need to be asked to every creation that you do second motto of our guru pramukh swami maharaj was when somebody asked him which thought remains with you 24 by 7 he said the thought that has never entered my mind shall i tell it first and that was more interesting he said that the thought of hurting anybody physically mentally or emotionally has never entered my mind so this is a moral compass that we are talking of today today's topic the thought of hurting anybody physically mentally or emotionally has never entered my mind so when you create a content you need to ask this question to yourself am i creating something that can create a hurt in the hearts and minds of people or can inspire somebody to create hurt this is in layman's terms and words the definition of orienting your moral compass these two questions we need to ask ourselves and when you ask these two questions definitely you will go a bit down on materialization and commercialization of your work but then everybody will have to do it to sustain our planet remember we are only one earth huh i think we are all aware of it we have only one earth and we don't have any other place to escape we need to take care of it and taking care of earth is in simple words taking care of humanity in hearts and minds of people and that humanity is morality many media people are sitting here 
advertising world people sitting here, entertainment world people sitting here. When Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was meeting a few media people at the Rashtrapati, Rashtrapati Bhavan, I think uh, I'm talking of the year 2007. It was a casual fireside chat. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, out, out of all his travels and reading and writing and meeting people, because Kalam had childlike curiosity and a philosopher like thinking, which is, a rare, which is a very rare combination in a person. He had it. He told this media people that, see, why are news on the front page of the newspapers that I read so much crammed with violence, with murders, with deaths, with rapes? Why? He told this newspaper people that print at least the first page with news that can bring positivity, that can bring smile, that can bring hope in the hearts and minds of people with a cup of coffee in the morning. Let the people start with hope and smile. You would all agree with me that the front page of the newspapers is like too much crammed news about violence, death. Then Dr. A.B.J. Abdul Kalam cited an example. He told this media people that when I was visiting Israel, there was a terrorist attack on the previous day and 12 people were killed. None of the Israel newspapers took this news on the front page. The principal newspaper, it took this news on the third page and the front page space was reserved for a small farmer who had created something in the drip irrigation system and was well applauded. This is moral compass. Terrorists ne bara logo ko maar diya tha, wo news tisre page pe dal diye. Aur ek chota sa farmer ka kuch creation tha, usko first page pe le aaye. This is moral compass in practice. We need today in the society. Ye hume chahiye. Why so many such news? Phir to haste haste Dr. Kalam sahab ne ye bhi ka, bring the cartoon back on the front page yaar. Bring the cartoon back on the first page. At least it can produce some small smile in the morning. This is moral compass getting reoriented. This is the need of the hour. And there is a scientific, experimental, and a clinical evidence to this. That when you think goodness and morality, when you try to express goodness and morality, when you actually want to inject goodness and morality in the hearts and minds of people, you gain, people gain, society gains, humanity gains. It was a survey in 2010 in the United States and Europe. The title of the survey was, Do Good, Live Well. Then this survey said that if you do these things, which I said just previously, people will need lesser pills and lesser visits to the hospital. So this is a direct advantage of Spreading goodness, spreading morality. People will need lesser pills and lesser visits to the hospital. Second thing, they will enjoy better mental and emotional health. And the third thing was much better than that. And the third thing was that by trying to spread goodness and moralities, actually, you create a platform for people to have a better and positive, optimistic view of life. Very important, isn't it? Imagine if this 800 crore people upon this earth, everybody rose from their bed every morning with an optimistic view of life. Amount of energy that spreads, creates, inspires, unbelievable. Am I right or wrong? Just raise your hands if you just agree. So that amount of energy, positivity we need in the morning. Inspiring stories. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam said, we find very less inspiring and success stories in the media and entertainment. Thousands of NGOs, I'm talking of everyday events. Huh? Every day, now listen to my statement. I'm putting it very, very profoundly. Every day, thousands of NGOs are doing great work in the society. 
you would find very less and less reporting of it. Every day, hundreds of individuals are going beyond their limits to give something to the society selflessly. You won't find their mention in the, in the mainstream media or, or very less mention. We need more inspiring and success stories. You find many IAS and IPS officers, they struggle from humble backgrounds, they struggle from ordinary villages to reach there at the highest level of academics. And the way they are implementing the government schemes to the most remote villages and people, I know a few of them, they are dedicating 16, 18 hours a day. They are within the circumference of a salary, still they are doing it. And so I say thousands of such happenings. You would be surprised to know that the thousands, let me talk practical. Thousands of blood donation camps every day in India. How much are reported? Wo sanstha ko agar ek photo chippa na hai, ek do vakya likha na hai, to bhai sab karna parta hai. Ha, agar vaha koi unconscious ho gaya, to a jayega fir se. So do you want really disruption to bring it on the front page? Or the real quality of goodness that it actually possesses and we want to give it to the people. Here is the orientation of the moral compass that we need to redesign in our lives, first in the minds and then it comes out as a creation. I said one thing. That even it is your intelligence and your creation. And even if you are legally right, you can't say I'm free to do it. Ye freedom shabd hai na, uski charcha hai baut chalti hai. Lekin every freedom comes with responsibility and accountability. Do you agree with me or not? Just raise your hands. If you say yes, every freedom comes with some responsibility, some accountability. Again, I would repeat, even if it has come from your best intelligence, best talent, best know-how, best platform, best experience, best back support system, and all good creation, and absolutely something new, the original one. And even if you're legally right, sometimes you don't have the right to express it and put it in public domain. I exemplify it. Can you call your mother, hey, my dad's wife, come here? Can you call your mother, hey, my dad's wife? You are legally right. You are legally right when you say to your mother that, hey, my dad's wife, come here or give me a cup of coffee. You are legally right. Am I right or wrong? First tell me. Are you legally right? Yes. Tell me a yes or no. Yes. You are legally right. Still, how many sitting in the audience today would prefer to call it out? Nobody. Why? Even if you have full freedom of speech, full freedom of expression, you are 100% legally right. But by calling your mom my father's dad, you are culturally wrong. You are socially wrong. You are family values wise wrong. You are society wise wrong. So you can't do it. This is the moral compass. You say, I've created something. It is out of the world. But if it is culturally wrong and traditionally wrong, if it is family values wise wrong, it is a potential danger to humanity. So even after full freedom of speech, full freedom of expression, full freedom of creativity, and being legally right, you can't do certain things if you are culturally wrong, socially wrong, family values wise wrong. I spoke it two times just to put forward my point perfectly into the understanding of all of you. So you have to think it from all angles. I, I let me talk from the viewer's point of view as well. From the viewer's point of view as well. My big question to the viewers as well, why are you wanting to see so much of violence? And why are you actually paying to see violence? What's the fun in it? 
why are viewers paying so much to view violence and illicit sex or drugs and trafficking why for what reason lekin sai kaisa ban gaya even if the system is in place sometimes if the viewers or if the players or if the audience doesn't follow the system that's also going to create a problem aap nahi banaoge to viewers aapko bolenge ek banaye kahan gaye bhai bhai sahab aap ye to aap banate the ab kyon nahi bana rahe ho viewers aapko bolenge to wahan bhi problem hai wahan bhi theek karna hai once there was a, a meeting of transport ministers at the international level and it was italy's transport minister's turn to speak something because basically the topic what being discussed was how to manage traffic jams in cities then italy's transport minister he said see that in our city of rome the traffic lights are taken as instructions so everybody follows in naples the traffic lights are taken as suggestions people may or may not follow this is a people's attitude i'm talking of viewers and people's attitude systems are in place ethical guidance is in place but it all depends upon the psyche the attitude and the angle of viewing of the people and then he said in our mafia city sicily this traffic lights the red green and amber are taken as christmas decorations people may or may not follow so even from the viewer side the moral compass needs to be oriented that they take ethical code of conduct seriously see indian culture has sensibilities those sensibilities of indian culture has to be addressed i am into the last 5 minutes of my talk i think i'm just into the last 5 minutes of my talk so we we have to address the sensibilities of indian culture otherwise not addressing that and creating something let me tell it is not fully moral see in the name of art and creativity we have full freedom still they are bounded by some fundamental basics laws or morality let me exemplify you in the name of art and creativity you can change the color of the ball in cricket red tha white aaya pink bhi aaya yes or no in the name of art and creativity you can change the color of the ball in cricket you can also change the color of the clothing of the players is all art and creativity you can also change the timings of the match daytime match night time match but three stumps remains three stumps six ball over remains a six ball over in whichever format in the name of art and creativity you can go from a test match to a 50 50 international to a t20 and perhaps a 10 10 in future we don't know that doesn't mean that if some creation is creating big money you forget the basics create a lot of art and creativity in cricket change of the color of the ball change in the uh, color of the dress of the players everything three stumps you can't change and you can't argue also am i my second statement acceptable to you you can't change the three stumps to two or four you can't even argue ha ya na argue bhi nahi kar warna wo cricket hi nahi rahega You can't argue twenty-two yard pitch. Perth Gabba ka ground chota hai, lots bana hai. Fir bhi dono mein pitch to twenty-two yard hai. The size of the grounds differ. Pitch twenty-two yard rahegi. And then you can't argue in the name of freedom of expression, freedom of thought. I'm a free bird. Dekho, maine six mari. So it was hundred and ten meters over the pavilion into the parking lot. I applied more power, so I, I should be given some more runs than a six. can you argue this you applied less or big power when you cross without the pitch the boundary it is a six whether it went over the boundary to the pavilion over the pavilion into the parking lot it is a six you can't argue that i see i applied so much power i should be given eight runs and 10 runs for this shot no 
See, you had the freedom to hit anywhere on the cricket ground. You had the freedom to apply any power. But the, but the rules, the basics, fundamentals are very clear about the four and the six, isn't it? So any freedom comes with responsibility and accountability. If you don't remember anything in my talk today, remember this line. All freedoms have some boundaries of responsibility and accountability to their own self, that is the creator's self, and his accountability and responsibility for the society and the viewers. We need to respect it. Lastly, I would say, just in two minutes, both films money hai. Bhagwan ko su karte hai. Shraddha me taklif ho is prakar ke dialogues aate hai. Aur sirf isi pe film banti hai ke Bhagwan ne meri mannat puri nahi ki. Bani hai do tien film, hit bhi gai hai. Bhagwan ne meri ye mannat puri nahi ki. मैं कोई दूसरे प्लेनेट में से आया था इधर आया था मेरी चाबी खो गई भगवान ने मन्नत पूरी नहीं की तो आपने भगवान को इतने में रख दिया क्या देर आर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ रिसर्च पेपर्स नाउ लिसन दिस केयरफुली देर आर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ रिसर्च पेपर्स बाय मैन ऑफ साइंस ऑन स्पिरिचुअलिटी हाउ स्पिरिचुअलिटी एंड रिलीजियोसिटी गिवस यू बेटर फिजिकल मेंटल एंड इमोशनल हेल्थ अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन मॉरल्स थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पेपर्स सीरीज बनती है वेब सीरीज बनती है कि ये धर्मस्थान में ये हुआ ये गुरु ने ये किया चलो बात सही थी आपने जो बताई वो बना था बात सही थी लेकिन ऐसे भी धर्मस्थान है ऐसे भी गुरु हैं जिन्होंने एथिकल लिविंग से काम किया और एथिक्स की वहां प्रेरणाएं मिलती हैं वो तो आप कभी बताते नहीं हो और बताने तो दोनों का बैलेंस बताए हामिन ऑफ विजिट स्वामीनाल अक्षरधाम एट दिल्ली स्वामीनाल अक्षरधाम एट दिल्ली आई कम फ्रॉम दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थाउजेंड्स ऑफ Incidents have happened at Swami Nakshadam in Delhi, where people have, after the visit, come out being a better version of their own self. एक सामान्य दूध वाले ने वहाँ देखा प्रदर्शनी दिखी और नियम लिया क्या मैं अपने दूध में पानी नहीं डालूँगा क्या प्रेरणा मिलती है धर्मस्थानों से हम तो साक्षी हैं तो वो नहीं दिखाते दिखाते इतना ही कि मन्नत पूरी नहीं की इसलिए श्रद्धा नहीं है तो आपके कर्म और प्रारब्ध होते हैं और कभी मन्नत पूरी नहीं करते तो वो भी भगवान की कृपा है ये समझने लिखे शास्त्र और संत चाहिए यू कांट डिफाइन और इंटरप्रेट लेट मी यूज दिस वर्ड यू कांट डिफाइन और इंटरप्रेट स्पिरिचुअलिटी जस्ट बाय योर माइंड लॉजिक इट इज अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ हार्ट फेथ इज अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ हार्ट सतीश गुजराल हमारे अक्षरधाम में आए थे प्राइम मिनिस्टर जो हमारे एक समय के थे आई के गुजराल उनके सगे भाई बिग आर्किटेक्ट and a proclaimed self proclaimed atheist all his life of 75 years when he visited akshardham in two hours of visit he said i see the hand of providence here aise hazaron prasang bante hain to what i mean to say if i told you want to do something on spirituality keep a balance because there is as i said 50000 research papers by science on spirituality university of philadelphia ne डॉक्टर एच जी कोइंग डॉक्टर एंड्रू न्यूबर्ग मैं आपको नाम देता हूं यू कैन गो ऑन गूगल एंड फाइंड इट साइको न्यूरो सॉफ्टवेयर से भगवान के नाम स्मरण के वक्त किस प्रकार के हारमोन प्रोड्यूस होते तलाश की ऑन फोर थाउजेंड सब्जेक्ट के वेन यू डू द चैंटिंग ऑफ द होली नेम वॉट काइंड ऑफ हारमोन गेट रिलीज फ्रॉम योर पिच्यूटरी ग्लैंड दैट वर ट्रैक्ट बाई दी साइको न्यूरो सॉफ्टवेयर एट द केम टू अ कंक्लूजन दैट वेन यू चैंट द होली नेम इवन फॉर टेन मिनट्स एवरी डे चिल्ड्रन हैव found that they had increase in their memory capacity 10 to 15% teenagers had increase in their will power and confidence capabilities 10 to 15% the middle aged people from 22 to 60 that we are sitting together they had an increase of about like 10 to 15% in their buffer capacity that is the capacity to absorb shocks of life jo budhe log the unme immune system ki 10 to 25% increase hui to bhagwan ke naam smaran se मेमोरी पावर बढ़ता है विल पावर बढ़ता है कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल बढ़ता है दुख सहन करने की शक्ति बढ़ती है दैट इज बफर कैपेसिटी और इम्यून सिस्टम बढ़ती है इट इज प्रूव बाई साइको न्यूरो सॉफ्टवेयर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फिलाडेल्फिया ये तो भाई साहब आपने कभी दिखाया नहीं तो बिफोर यू प्ले विथ सम सब्जेक्ट गो थ्रू अरो रिसर्च एंड डोंट जस्ट प्रोजेक्ट वॉट इज इन योर फ्रेम ऑफ माइंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एट ऑल जस्टिफाई द सब्जेक्ट Am I right or wrong?
एब्सोल्यूट जस्टिफिकेशन नीड्स एन ऑलराउंड स्टडी ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट सिर्फ ये नहीं दिखा सकते कि दूसरे प्लेनेट में से आए मेरी चाबी खोई गई खो गई और मन्नत मानी और मुझे भी वापस नहीं मिली चलो भगवान नहीं है कोई ये नहीं फिल्म बना सकता ओ लेट मी सू गॉड सू करते क्योंकि स्टडी नहीं किया है तो द प्लेटफॉर्म लास्ट सेंटेंस द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ मॉरलिटी इज अ गुड ऑलराउंड स्टडी ऑफ योर सब्जेक्ट बिफोर यू क्रिएट बिफोर यू क्रिएट अ कंटेंट ओनली देन यू विल बी जस्टिफाइंग इट from the legal aspect from the social aspect from the cultural aspect from the spiritual aspect and that is how we give things to the new generation so thank you very much for patiently listening to me all my prayers for all of you and again i am thankful to munjal for giving me an opportunity to be with you today and on behalf of baps and all the saints we have come here thank you very much and all my prayers for all of you thank you very much on uh, behalf of uh, fikki swami ji let me thank you wholeheartedly i think uh, it's been a very very illuminating conversation i i wish we could have more time with you and we've absolutely run out of time and our next speaker the minister is already here so i will apologize to the audience and we will you know won't be taking questions and i would like to close this session with really heartfelt gratitude for you to come today and share your thoughts Okay. Uh, all right. I have one question which I want to ask. If that's okay. Or is there a question in the audience? If do we have a chit somewhere? Right. We will only take it in written forms. I think Swami. I think I had just one question as the create. You know, as a creator, particularly from a kid standpoint. how do you ensure children watch the right kind of content you know as a parent i always face that dilemma so i would just want you to highlight that see it's difficult for a creator to really ensure that a kid watches the right kind of content they have the kids rating and everything on the ott platforms and everything but as i said that uh, uh, putting your foot into that field that how would i ensure that the kids watch the right kind of content basically being more right in the first field the basic field of creating a moral content and that moral content as i said should align with the basic human values and especially morality it should be inspiring it should not damage the mental and emotional health of a person it is as simple as that it is as simple as that see in last one minute i'll finish see what happened day before yesterday you know big news the founding father of ai artificial intelligence jofre hinton he resigned from google why did he resign he said i think i regret my life work of creating artificial intelligence because it is going to snatch away millions of jobs it is going to create lot of misinformation internet is going to get flooded with fake videos fake photographs and fake information and so i am not convinced with that creation i regret it that i have done something morally wrong and so i am resigning the father of ai resigned day before yesterday and 1100 artificial intelligence ai creators 1100 they wrote a joint letter to the white house that we urge the united states government to immediately put a pause on further research of generative ai just america and europe will lose 300 million jobs in the coming years because of ai see in the name of creation you have to think of people think of their lives think of their livelihood and that will teach us more moral values of creation thank you Thank you so much Swamiji it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here and a privilege thanks again